cooperation between China and a group of 17 Central and Eastern European countries got a boost on Tuesday at a virtual summit postponed by nearly a year due to COVID-19. The ninth such summit made commitments to furthering cooperation on healthcare and coronavirus vaccines as well as economic development. Launched in 2012, the cooperation mechanism originally focused on trade, energy and infrastructure, but the coronavirus has made cooperation on public health more urgent and necessary. What's the significance of the framework 10 years on? What benefits has the framework delivered? And what hurdles still exist? I'm pleased to be joined by Sabah Wolf via Skype from Budapest. He is China advisor of Baker McKenzie Law Firm. And from here in Beijing, Professor Ling Wenshuang, de Vice Dean of the School of European Languages and Cultures at Beijing Foreign Studies University, also Deputy Director of the Center for Central and Eastern European Studies. Welcome to the point to both of you. Um, I would like to go to Mr. Wolf first. Now, Chinese President Xi Jinping made the, the remarks while delivering a keynote speech at the China CEEC summit. Uh, he said, guided by the conviction that 17 plus 1 could make more than 18, we have set up a multi-dimensional cooperation framework led by the Leaders' Summit and covering 20 plus sectors to ensure the participation of all Central and Eastern European countries. And he stressed openness and inclusiveness as key to the uh, cooperation between the two sides. Mr. Wolf, how do you understand this idea that 17 plus 1 could make more than 18? Oh, I, I think um, the, the 17 countries uh, uh, market is, is uh, uh, not too big one by one uh, because there are, uh, they, they, they are actually small countries uh, with like uh, Czech Republic, Hungary, 10 million, Poland is the biggest with 40 million population and the rest of the countries are even, uh, uh, some of them are even smaller. Um, so, um, uh, what uh, President Xi might mean with this is, uh, is probably uh, the, the cooperation of these uh, 17 countries uh, uh, plus China uh, might definitely make more than, uh, than uh, uh, these countries could make on a bilateral basis with China. Uh, these, these countries uh, are, are uh, uh, quite fast in, in development, especially recently. Uh, they, uh, they picked up some speed and uh, and uh, uh, the economic development uh, is on a very good way in these countries. Um, so uh, with cooperating with, with such an economic power like China, uh, and of course uh, with cooperating with also European Union, um, as a big part of these 70 countries uh, uh, are the part of European Union too, um, uh, they, they can represent uh, quite a fast uh, uh, development rate. Uh, and they can represent a kind of uh, a kind of joint market uh, mm -hmm. for uh, for Chinese products and mm -hmm. also uh, uh, source uh, for uh, European products to China. Uh, mm -hmm. Plus, uh, these countries uh, these countries represent um, uh, a willingness to uh, to receive foreign investment, and uh, and they welcome Chinese investors too, mm -hmm. uh, manufacturing investors. Uh, mostly, uh, and uh, these countries uh, can, can be a, a huge manufacturing base for Europe too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Professor Lin, how do you understand the openness and inclusiveness that President Xi talked about when he was making that speech? Broadly, is that in line with China's policy, China's um, stance on cooperation with uh, European countries in general? Okay. Well, uh, I think uh, uh, China CEC's uh, cooperation uh, has made uh, very positive progress in a relatively short period of time and has uh, uh, generally welcomed by uh, the 17 CEC's. Uh, the reason is uh, to give full, of play, full play to uh, economic uh, complementary uh, to promote uh, uh, cooperation to be more uh, pragmatic and uh, achieve more practical results. Uh, 
uh, China uh, can provide many projects with, with unique uh, advantages and uh, uh, the CEECs on the other hand have their own advantages uh, fields. So uh, I think the uh, economic uh, uh, contempt, uh, uh, compl complementary can succeed. Uh, for, uh, let me just raise uh, uh, some examples. Uh, uh, like uh, Montenegro is a very small country as we all know uh, but uh, uh, they still have so many fields uh, like uh, ecol ecology and the environmental protection uh, they are uh, worth uh, of learning mm -hmm. uh, and uh, Estonia uh, another example uh, is also a small country uh, but uh, Estonia leads the uh, international level in uh, digital construction. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, just a simple examples for yeah. us okay. that uh, we can learn from these uh, CE countries. Yeah. So um, let me focus on trade for a moment here because trade is a very important component of this relationship and uh, despite the coronavirus, uh, actually China's trade with Central and Eastern countries jumped by 8.4% in 2020. So Mr. Wolf, help us understand what could be the reasons behind this jump and, and the significance for these countries that their trade is flourishing the volume um, reached over 100 billion US dollars for the very first time in history. Well, first of all, uh, this 100 billion US dollars uh, of uh, foreign trade in this region uh, is, uh, is, is, yes, it's uh, pretty high historical, but only compared to the previous numbers. If you compare China's trade with, uh, with other geographical locations, uh, then you see that, that, that this, uh, this trade is uh, <coughs> I'm sorry, this trade is is not so high, so we had a, we had a pretty low base. Uh, however, uh, these uh, governments uh, and, and uh, especially the Hungarian government uh, is uh, is uh, emphasizing uh, the development of trade and uh, and other relations with China uh, in the recent ten years. Uh, and actually, if you if we if we examine the numbers. Uh, of trade uh, between uh, Central and Eastern European countries and China, uh, we can see that uh, ever since the early 2000 years, uh, starting 2002-03, uh, these, uh, these numbers have been growing slowly, uh, but growing all the time. Even, even during the 2007-2008 a crisis. Uh, the the foreign trade between Central East European countries and China have been growing, uh, and uh, I believe that uh, recently the, the the growth rate is uh, is speeding up uh, because uh, the Central East European countries are getting stronger in economy, mm -hmm. so offering more to China. Yeah. Uh, China is more open to to, to foreign products and. Um, and uh, these countries have uh, technological development. These, yeah. these countries have uh, uh, pretty good uh, high technology and uh, high value products, uh, which could be interesting for China too. Yeah. Um, Professor Lin, 8.4% jump. How significant is that for China in terms of uh, uh, increasing its trade with that part of the world? I mean, 2020 was a very difficult year for a lot of country. It was negative mm -hmm. growth. For a lot of uh, country, um, foreign trade was a plummet situation. So how significant is 8.4%? Mm-hmm. Uh, I think facts speak uh, louder than words. Uh, the data you just mentioned demonstrates how the 17 plus 1 cooperation under the framework of Belt and Road can still bring great uh, vitality even in such a difficult time. Of course, many factors contribute uh, to the growth of bilateral uh, trade and investment uh, between China and the CECs, uh, um, uh, and uh, including including 17 plus one cooperation, uh, China Europe regular railway cargo services uh, CECs have a greater demands for foreign investment and so on and so forth. I think all these. 
factors contributed to mm -hmm. uh, the fact. And from yeah. our point of view, yeah. first of all, China's uh, uh, epidemic, uh, China's effort, effort against the epidemic works better. Uh, the ec economic recovery is earlier, and the re economy, economy is basically facing good. And uh, also, uh, CEE uh, sees uh, has uh, also f performed relatively well in EU in coping with the impact of uh, epi epidemic. I see. So I think uh, that's uh, why yeah. uh, we can see the good result mm -hmm. from uh, 2020. Yeah, well, right now, uh, vaccine cooperation is a big part of it. I know there will be people who are who will be pointing fingers, who will be suspecting, you know, China using whatever vaccine, you know, for whatever purpose. But the fact is, these countries are in need of vaccine and China is one of the major producers, not the only one, but a major producer, manufacturer of vaccines uh, and are actively supplying different countries. Hungary, for instance, became the first EU country to approve Sinopharm vaccine and uh, they actually have uh, uh, already delivered um, um, four batches of they will be delivering four batches over the past over the next four months so mr. wolf how do you look at the kind of uh, public health cooperation between the two sides uh, what benefits is you know driving countries such as Hungary and Serbia to cooperate with China uh, uh, there are uh, very good cooperation in, in, in several fields uh, uh, be between China and Hungary, for instance, or China and Serbia too. It's not only economical, but also, also educational, healthcare, and so on. Uh, so uh, uh, during the pandemic, uh, of course, the, the healthcare cooperation uh, has, has a little more emphasis. Uh, what the Hungarian government is trying to do at the moment is uh, is trying to, to to save the population, trying to do the best uh, in uh, in fighting the the, the coronavirus, and uh, and and I think they are they are doing whatever they can, and uh, they are serving uh, the Hungarian population's health by. Uh, uh, by uh, purchasing the uh, the Chinese vaccines, uh, I know Hungary is the is the first country in the EU to to approve the Chinese vaccines. Mm -hmm. But probably it's because Hungary is the fastest to react. Uh, we know, we heard uh, in the news that uh, uh, that other vaccines which are available on the market and which has been imported to Hungary too mm -hmm. uh, have been has been used, but. Uh, but the manufacturers are not manufacturing as uh, many uh, of, of these vaccines as uh, as needed. Uh, so the, the the actual vaccination could be very slow if uh, if the governments don't think yeah. uh, on uh, on diverse basis. So the Hungarian government reacted quite fast, and uh, I actually personally welcome this idea to uh, to import a Chinese vaccine uh, because uh, probably that will. Uh, uh, have the population, have to cure the population earlier than other countries. Um, as I've always said, you know, whichever vaccine, if, can, if it can help save lives, why not? Uh, we have run out of time. Many thanks to my guest, uh, Saba Wolf, for joining us from Budapest, and uh, Professor Ling Wenshuang joining us here in Beijing. We are going to take a very short break, and when I return, British media regulator has revoked the license for CGTN, the channel you're watching, to broadcast in the UK. What's the conflict, and how consistent are regulations applied? Stay with us.